Literally, right before coming to your audience, I was in my room. Literally, before coming to the stage, I was in my room scrolling over the news. BBC A Hamas rocket has attacked Tel Aviv, and they had a picture of some broken glass in a house. And they had a picture of a man pointing to the broken glass saying, this is what the rocket did. And then the headline went on, Israel retaliates 35 dead in Rafah refugee camp. The picture was of broken glass. The picture was of a house that had been rattled. And in the fine print, 35 dead in the refugee camp of Rafah. No pictures of the dead babies over there. No pictures of the people of Gaza. No pictures of the reality of what is taking place. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, wallahi, we are so tired. We are so frustrated. We are so angry. We are so enraged. I am somebody who speaks a lot, as you all know, but I am speechless. Words fail me. I have never in my adult life been so exasperated and frustrated. Wallahi, we are at a loss even to describe how we feel. How can all of this be happening? How can we make sense of this inhumanity, this sheer callousness, the depravity, the evil of what we are seeing over and over and over again? The cruelty does not have enough synonyms to describe what we are seeing. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, the fact of the matter is that it's not just the Palestinians and the Arabs and the Muslims that our politicians don't care about. It's their own American Muslim citizens. They couldn't care less about us. They couldn't care less about a significant percentage of their own country. You know what really, really astounds me? And I've lived through so many crises. I was an adult already when 9-11 happened. I was in my 20s. Even after the horrific events of 9-11, President Bush visited a mosque. And at least in a token gesture, no matter how angry we are at him, at least a token gesture, he said, we care about the American Muslims. The American Muslims are not our enemy. It was a token gesture, but at least it showed something about real politics. You bring your people together. You show some leadership. For some bizarre reason, when it comes to Gaza and when it comes to Israel, it's as if our government doesn't make any sense whatsoever. What exactly are they gaining by this policy? What exactly are they gaining? Which side of the world are they on? Who are they really supporting? Their own interests or the interests of another country? Our politicians are well aware that they're going to lose elections and they're still catering and pandering to the foreign government outside. How does one explain this? I don't know. I honestly don't know. How does one explain the sheer insanity? It is absolutely irrational, illogical what we see. And the fact of the matter, O oh Muslims, is that we as American Muslims, not only do we have every right to be angry, not only do we have every right to feel the way that we do, but the media, the government, politicians have gone on the offensive. Look at what's happening in every single talk show. Do you condemn October 7th? Do you condemn that political organization? Do you condemn? Do you condemn? Oh Muslims! It is high time that we claim the narrative and we shift the conversation. Don't be intimidated by such tactics. Don't fall prey to these types of tactics. Be brave, learn your facts and push back. You want me to condemn? Yes, wallahi, I will condemn. I will begin by condemning the debacle of the Balfour Declaration where all of this began. The Balfour Declaration and the Sykes-Pico Agreement. Let's begin by condemning World War I. Let's begin by condemning Great Britain handing over a piece of land that it had nothing to do with to a people that have nothing to do with it. Let's begin by condemning that. You want me to condemn? You want me to condemn? 
Let us begin by condemning the first and the second Nakba in which 1.5 million people were displaced. You want me to condemn? You want me to condemn genocides and massacres? Let us begin by condemning the massacres that Israel perpetrated against Palestine, beginning with Deir Yassin in 1947, where hundreds of bodies were filled up in the well of Deir Yassin. You want me to condemn? You want me to condemn hostages? Let's begin by condemning 15,000 Palestinians held without trial, without any fair representation in Israeli prisons. Let's begin by condemning them. You want me to condemn? You want me to condemn killing of people? Let us begin by the carpet bombings that Israel constantly does for the last 25 years. And as for, and I'm going to go there today, brothers and sisters, because enough is enough. And if we're all cowered into silence, if we're all too scared to speak the truth, they're going to get away with it. But if every one of us raises our voices, if every one of us is brave enough to push back, well then, inshallah ta'ala, we will achieve a level of social credibility. We will push back at the narrative. When too many people speak the truth, that is what is going to break down falsehood. And that's what we need to do. So let's go to the very events you want us to condemn. You want us to condemn October 7th? I have plenty to condemn even on that day. How about we begin by condemning the lies that you perpetrated about what happened on that day? Lies that went all the way from CNN, from BBC, from New York Times, from every single newspaper. Even our president lied straight to us and he looked at the camera and he said, I saw pictures of 40 decapitated babies. Pure lies, Israeli propaganda. I will condemn and this is my condemnation. How dare you lie to us? You're supposed to be our president. You're supposed to speak the truth. And you lie to the world. And because of that lie, people were enraged and thousands lost their lives. We all know it was a lie. Even the New York Times had to withdraw and retract the story. You want me to condemn? How about the condemnation of your lies, of the mass rapes that you said occurred? Not a single rape has been, has been attested to that day. I will condemn because you're the ones who created a narrative. You're the ones who falsely construed a narrative that was then used to bomb, to kill, to maim, to rampage. You're the ones who falsely created a narrative. This October 7th did not come out of a vacuum. You want me to condemn? I will condemn 75 years of brutal occupation before October 7th. That's what I'm going to condemn. Enough is enough, brothers and sisters. Enough is enough. And what Gaza has done, what Gaza has done is that it has shown the world the hypocrisy of those who claim to champion human rights and freedom. Gaza has shown the hypocrisy of those who said, we are the world's leaders because we are the best. We are the world's leaders because we are for democracy. We are for human rights. We are for liberties. And what a small group of people in Gaza have done is to show the world those were blatant lies. Absolute lies. The mask has fallen. The mask of deceit has fallen and the truth has been laid bare. And the myth of the moral superiority of Western civilization has been shattered single-handedly by our brothers and sisters in Gaza. And that is a fact. What we are seeing, brothers and sisters, there's no doubt that even after this war is over, there's a long way ahead. There's a long way ahead. Wallahi, there's no way to mince my words here. Even if the bombing were to stop today, 600,000 people have no place to live. There is not a single hospital remaining in Gaza. Not a single university. Not a single school. Not a single intact infrastructure in half of the, of, of the city, of, of the places of Gaza. It will take billions of dollars and decades of building 
to at least bring it back to a place where people can live semi-normal lives. So there's no easy victory. There's no simple end to this game. The fact is we're in for the long run. But I predict, O oh Muslims, I predict that from the ashes of Gaza, from the rubble that has been caused by our bombs, American bombs, from that rubble, it's not just a new generation of Palestinians that will rise. No, we're also seeing the rise of a new power in our own lands. We're seeing the rise of those who actually want to fight for truth. They actually want to have a better world. As we see around us, look at the thousands of students that are protesting across this country. Students that are not Palestinian, students that are not Muslim. For the last two weeks, I've been crisscrossing this country, speaking at student protests. I went to the Harvard protest. I spoke at the Yale protest. I spoke at the MIT protest. I spoke at Northwestern at UTD. Go look at those videos. And every protest I went to, every single protest I went to, Wallahi, 90% of them were people of other backgrounds and faiths. Only 5-10% were people from our background and faith. The world is changing. The tide is shifting. The narrative has now been changed. And there is no going back, O oh Muslims. There's no going back. The fact of the matter, even if Gaza is in shambles, the people of Palestine have won on the global battlefield. Never in 75 years has the Palestinian cause garnered so much support. Never in 75 years has the entire globe, other than a few countries, come behind Palestine. South Africa, South Africa, the land of Nelson Mandela. South Africa, that knows what apartheid is. South Africa, that's lived through the only official apartheid before Israel. South Africa sued Israel because it does not and cannot afford to see another apartheid regime. And not only, I don't know if you know this, but Nelson Mandela's grandson accepted Islam. He's a Muslim. He's named himself Muhammad, Nelson Mandela's grandson. And Nelson Mandela's grandson visited Palestine and Israel, and he lived through apartheid. And his grandson said, as somebody who's lived through apartheid, I want to say that what I've seen in Palestine is worse than the apartheid I ex experienced in South Africa. This is coming from somebody who is the grandson of Nelson Mandela. Subhanallah, the world really is changing. Ireland, and Ireland is another country that has lived through subjugation. It has lived through oppression. Ireland, Ireland has been constantly under state terrorism of England. And they know this for the last hundreds of years, the way that the British treated them, the way that they've been treated, the number of people killed, the policies against them, the starvation that took place 100 years ago. The Irish remember all of these things. And they remember that when they were going through their crises, when they were being mistreated, when they were being massacred, when innocents were killed constantly, they remember the world turned to blood blind eye towards them. The world always placated the superpower that was England. And so Ireland said, enough is enough. We will not allow this to happen again. And so Ireland stood up and said, we're going to recognize Palestine as a state. And Norway and Sweden and other countries and Spain and they are all countries that are trying to be on the right side of history. They've learned from the past and they don't want to make the mistakes of previous generations. They are all standing up in support of a free Palestine. Never before have we seen the tide cha change so much. So the future, brothers and sisters, wallahi, it is bright. The future really is bright. And inshallah, victory is imminent. There's no question about that. But here, we have to ask ourselves, what exactly is our role in all of this? What exactly is our responsibilities? 
And if you listen to my talks and lectures I've been giving literally since this whole issue began eight, nine months ago, I've been constantly hammering the same point over and over again. Oh Muslims, this isn't just about Gaza. This isn't just about one place, one time, one peoples. No. It is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using Gaza as a beautiful catalyst for the rest of us all. Gaza is sparking iman in all of our hearts. Gaza is rekindling a love of the ummah and a love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a love of our ideals. That's what is happening. Because you know what? Even if Gaza were to be solved tomorrow, we still have duties and responsibilities. We still have a higher purpose of living. We still have to excel in achieving our purpose in this life. And what is our purpose? Our purpose is very clear. So that you may bear witness unto mankind. You may preach the truth, you may live the truth, you may embody the truth, you may invite others to the true message of our faith. That's what our role is. And so, Gaza, and let's go on, it's not just about Gaza, what's happening in Sudan, what's happening amongst the Uyghurs, what's happening in Burma, what's happening in Kashmir. All of these causes, and even more. I stand here today, and 25 years have gone, and Guantanamo is still open as we speak. 24 years have gone and Guantanamo is still open. It's not a matter of one cause and that's it. No, what these causes do is they remind us, they provoke us, they force us out of our comfort zones. Allah did not create us to live like animals, to eat, to drink, to be merry and to die. No, we have a higher purpose. And these causes, they remind us of that higher purpose. They remind us of nobility. They remind us that we have a mission to accomplish. And that mission is to be role models to the rest of mankind. To show people what it means to be a believer in La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. What happens when you believe in the Quran? What happens when you walk in the path of the prophets? Our lives have to embody those values. And the people around us, they need to see what me what that implies they need to see the changes that happen our mission therefore will not stop even if one problem is solved even if another problem is solved because problems will continue to arise believe you me ask anybody older than you do you really think problems will stop after we solve one of them no constantly issues will happen around the globe in our personal lives domestically and such is this world such is this dunya this dunya is meant to be full of problems so that we continue to solve them we continue to try to make the world a better place but our ultimate destination is not this world this world is not the ultimate abode of peace that's ahead of us that's in Jannah we try to make this world as peaceful as possible but the actual peace will come in the next. And the better job we do in this world, the better we will achieve peace in the next. That's our goal. Once you understand this, O Muslims, don't be disheartened if you don't see an impact in your own efforts of what you do. Because that's not how Allah will judge you. Don't become disheartened, disillusioned. Don't lose your hope or your spirit if you keep on trying and trying and trying and you don't see any change. Maybe, just maybe, we might not see change for weeks or months or years. We still have to continue putting in the effort. We still have to continue persevering, pushing on, doing whatever we can do. And there's so much we can do. There's so much we can do. I've said here before, and I'll say it again. In the entire globe of 1.7 Muslims, 1.7 billion Muslims, we as American Muslims, us 5 million American Muslims, we are the only American Muslim community, we're the only global Muslim community that can effect change from within the American superpower. We have to effect that change. We have to effect that change. We have to understand we are worth hundreds if not thousands of other Muslims around the world in this one aspect and that is the impact we can cause. Allah has tested us, Allah has blessed us, Allah has chosen us that this is our land. And our land is involved in a heinous crime. Our land is involved in a genocide. Our president is enabling that genocide. Our tax dollars are being spent to kill innocent people. 
You cannot and you should not be silent. You must stand up. You must do your best to fight against that. You must raise your voice. You must protest. You must impact. This is what we must do. There are no two opinions about this. Oh Muslims, make sure that you make it your priority. You make it your priority that people know that you are not going to tolerate this. Not under my watch. We're not going to let this administration get away with what it has done. We're we're not going to let our country continue to kowtow to another regime, another apartheid state. And you know what? You can even ignore all of the politics and all of the religious issues and just tell your fellow Americans, our tax dollars should be spent within our country. Simple as that. Let's take care of our own health care. Let's take care of our own crises. You know, somebody calculated, somebody calculated that if we were to take just one or two years of our foreign aid to Israel and we were to solve our homelessness problem, we would not have a single homeless person in all of America. Even if somebody doesn't know anything about foreign politics, just say to them, would you rather solve homelessness or continue giving aid to a foreign country? It's that simple. Wallahi, it's not complicated. Keep on persevering, raising these points. And you know the irony is, subhanAllah, sometimes those whom we don't like, they hand us talking points. They hand us what we should do. You know, our president and others lied about the 40 babies that were decapitated. They said there's video footage of that. There's not a single video footage. But you know what there is video footage of? IDF soldiers themselves videotaping themselves as they manhandle Palestinians, as they make fun of dead Palestinian children, as they play with the toys of the children they just killed, as they, as they look at the private garments of the women that they've expelled from their houses. They have video footage of that. They're showing it to us and for the world to see. It's our job to amplify those voices. It's our job to keep on retweeting and showing the reality. Do you understand the how terrible terrified our country must be when it wants to ban TikTok? Do you understand the level of depravity that they've reached? They're terrified of the truth. They're terrified of the videos. And because of this, they want to ban a social app. I mean, I would have wanted to ban it for other reasons a few weeks ago, right? But now all of a sudden, I'm a big fan of TikTok too. Because if TikTok's going to help us, if TikTok is going to help us spread the word, well then so be it. But there's a level of frustration, a level of narrow-mindedness, a level of fear, a paranoia that is being displayed over here. And even fellow Americans are picking it up. And so our job is to act like catalysts and to continue to push the narrative, to continue to bring that change from within. And I said this yesterday and I'll say it again today, the exact same thing, just in case somebody wants to misinterpret what we're trying to do and somebody believes that we are a type of fifth column a type of traitorous group of people who want to change the system somebody says we're preaching a stealth jihad and a secret jihad we say to them no this isn't secret jihad this is the essence of american democracy this is the essence of what it means to be an american this is the essence of standing up for your civil rights, of causing an influence in your own politicians. We have every right to influence our country just like other people have the influence of their own. This is the reality of our constitution. In fact, we are wanting to influence our country. What is APAC doing? Israel is trying to influence our country. And APAC boasts about this. Unbelievably, the Israeli lobby posted on their own website that every single candidate we financed and supported won. APAC is a foreign lobby. And they're boasting that their foreign money has influenced our politics. All we got to do is retweet APAC and say, look, that's exactly what these people are doing. They are witnesses against themselves, O oh Muslims. They are showing the world who they really are. So my advice to you is very simple. 
follow the Quranic message. Surah Al-Anfal, verse 45, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, when you're engaged in an altercation, then be firm, fathbutu, be firm, do not waver, do not give up. And continue to remember Allah frequently so that you, so that you are aided. So be firm in what you're doing. Be firm in your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah says, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ وَصْبِرُوا Do not fight amongst yourselves. Unite, O Muslims, as one. Allah says, while talking about engaging with the enemy, while talking about strategy and tactics, Allah says, what you cannot do is divide amongst yourselves. Make sure you are united as one. So my message and call to all of you. Let Palestine be the catalyst that unites each and every one of us upon the truth. Let us understand when it comes to Gaza, when it comes to Palestine, we don't care what our backgrounds and ethnicities are. We don't care what the color of our skin are. We don't care about abstract issues of theology and fiqh and aqidah. We are all people of the kalima. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. We all come under one banner and we are going to be united against the people who are wanting to kill and massacre innocent people. O oh, Muslims, remain firm, remain persevering, persist in all that you're doing, raise your voice, be an influence to your family and friends, and understand we're in this battle for the long run. And we might not see political victory immediately, we might not, but I say to you loudly and clearly, we have already won the moral victory, we have already won the moral battle, Palestine has won, the people of Gaza have won, the world has seen the hypocrisy of our administration, the hypocrisy of the alleged superpowers, the rest of the world has seen this reality and in the end, alhamdulillah, truth has been made clear from falsehood and this is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In barely eight months, every single statistic has shown that the next generation of Americans, the, bo the bulk of them, the majority of them are sympathetic to the people of Gaza. That next generation, it's only a matter of a few years before they become the CEOs. They become the congressmen and congresswomen. They become the senators. And yes, they become the presidents. So we have won, O Muslims. The battle has been won in the long run. And and that has only happened because of the Iman of the people of Gaza and then other people around the world. Inshallah, all of us, we played our part in doing what is the right thing. So, O oh Muslim, stand up for the sake of Allah. Stand up for the people of Gaza. Stand up for truth and bear testimony to truth and do not bear testimony to falsehood. Fight your own small battles. Don't let anybody Try to overwin you with the wrong in information. Learn the truth. Fight back with statistics and knowledge. Change the narrative at your local level. Make sure none of your family and none of your friends and none of your colleagues has an incorrect picture. And if you continue to do so, then insha'Allah ta'ala, within our own lifetimes, we will see Gaza to be free. Oh Muslims, I want to conclude as I always do. And that is with that loud takbir that is going to signify how much we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But today, I'm going to ask you all to literally stand up as we do this. We want to do a takbir that is coming straight from the depths of our souls, straight from the bottom of our hearts. I want this takbir to be so loud that the palaces of Netanyahu is going to hear this takbir. I want us all to demonstrate the quwa, the strength of our iman. I want that takbir to resonate every single bone in our body. I want this to be the loudest takbir that has ever been heard in all of America. It will be heard all the way around the globe. Takbir! 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 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.